We've been here before. As our esteemed friend from Liberia reminded us, we were here in the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, the 90s. Remember 1992, the year of the woman in politics? Where did that go? We've gone back since then. But in the narrative of women's stories all over the world, we are again at this moment where the world is watching, where the light is shining, where our narrative has evolved to a point where everyone from the Bank of America to McKinsey to World Bank to every major institution around the world is taking notice. And why are they taking notice? Because there's so much evidence of our power. It has been proven now over 10 years of constant evaluation that when women are represented in companies on boards and in management, and when women are running organizations and countries, we know that the agenda changes. We know that we bring different kinds of needs and issues and instincts and feelings and, yes, values. And now those values are being evaluated, researched, and categorized. And suddenly everyone's going, well, there's really nothing more we could do that would change the world faster than invest in girls' education and empower women. So that's the story. That's what we're hearing. And in between this conference and the 23 other women's conferences between now and December, we are hot. <laughs> or cool. <laughs> Depending on whether you're under 30 or over 30. I'm not I'm never sure which one of those which one of those words is right anymore. <laughs> but but the fact is we are really the story of the moment. And it turns out, sisters and enlightened brothers, that women have really glad to see you here. <laughs> it turns out that we innately have the qualities and characteristics and values, yes, that are better suited to solving the challenges of today's world. And if they're fully deployed, we believe, and the data shows, that we can lead the world to a more prosperous, peaceful, and sustainable place. Now, that is a wonderful opportunity. <laughs>